Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. In this session, we will be covering transfer layer. That is chapter seven of CCNA semester one, introduction to network. This chapter is divided in two sections. Section 7.1, transport layer protocols, which describes the purpose of the transport layer in managing the transportation of data in end-to-end -end communication and describe characteristics of TCP and UDP protocols, including, including port numbers and their uses. And section 7.2, TCP and UDP, which you will be able to explain how TCP session establishment and termination process facilitate reliable communication, explain how TCP protocols data units are transmitted and acknowledged to guarantee delivery, explain the UDP client process to establish communication with the server, determine whether high reliability TCP transmissions or non-guaranteed UDP transmissions are best suited for common application. Seven point one, transport layer protocol. Role of transport layer. So if we visit the OSI layers again, we have a layer seven application. On this layer, we protocol the work here, something like HTTP, SMTP. Then we have layer six, which is presentation protocol. They work here like a formatting protocol, JPEG, MPEG. Then we have a layer five, which is session. We have a protocols NFS, SMB, they work here. Then we have a layer four, transport layer. Transport layer, we have a TCP and UDP protocols that work in this layer. Then we have a layer three network layer. We talked about it, IPv4, IPv6. Layer two data link layer, we have something like Ethernet, 802.3. And then layer one, a physical layer, which is DSL and T1s. The role of the transport layer. The transport layer is responsible for establishing temporary communication session between two application and delivering data between them. The TCP IP uses two protocol to achieve this. Uses transmission control protocol or user datagram protocol. So TCP or UDP. Primary responsibilities of a transport layer protocol is tracking the individual communication between application on the source and destination, and segmenting data for manageability for and reassembling segment data into stream of application data at the destinations. Identifying the proper application for each communication stream. Conversation multiplexing, segmenting the data, enables many different communication from many different users to be interleaved or multiplexed on the same network at the same time. Provides a means of both send and receive data when running multiple applications. Headers added to each segment to identify it. So for imagine, imagine that, that we have a, a two or three websites that we are navigating from to. Uh, we have a do, same time, we're doing some instant messaging. We are sending emails. So what transport layer is gonna do is gonna actually divide these data into small segments and then is gonna interleave. So same time we we be sending data for website number one, uh, next segment will be email, next segment website number two, third segment, uh, fourth segment, and so on, different type of data. So this is called interleaved or multiplexed. Transport layer reliability. Different applications have different transport reliability requirements. TCP IP provides two transport layer protocols, TCP and UDP. TCP will provide reliable delivery, ensuring that all of the data arrives at the destination. Uses acknowledgement, delivery, and other processes to ensure the delivery. Makes larger demand on the networks, which more overhead. Or we have a UDP, which provides just the basic function, functions for delivery. No reliability. Less overhead, a lot faster. So for example, applications up there that you can see is the FTP uses TCP, reliable uh, transport. HTTP or web, www, uses TCP. Email uses TCP. You can see the DNS uses TCP and UDP, so reliable and unreliable. Or we have another protocol, a trivial file transfer protocol, which will use uh, UDP. UDP is a no reliability, uh, no guarantee, but it doesn't mean that it's, it's not good. 
is the data most of the data is going to get to the destination it's just that there is no no guarantee that it will get there but usually it does get there introduction to uh, tcp tcp is defined in rsc 793 request for common 793 uh, it's connection oriented protocol which creates uh, beforehand it creates a session between the source and destination before we start sending the data it's got a reliable delivery any data that is being lost or corrupted it will retransmit them or the data reconstruction reconstruct numbering and sequence it so every segment will be sequenced so at the destination the the destination will be able to re reassemble the data exactly the way or reconstruct the data uh, the way they were sent for example say that you're sending uh, uh, five sequence uh, they, uh, uh, segment one out of five two out of five three out of five four out of five and five out of five at the destination, maybe they're not going to arrive the same th same way the way you send them. Maybe three out of five will become will arrive before two out of five. So the TCP has got the uh, method to keep this in the memory until all the sequence arrive there, and it will uh, deliver them to the application layer nicely sequenced. Flow control regulates the amount of data that is transmitted. So for example say that uh, there's a congestion or there is a overtax to the destination with a flow control we can control how much data we are sending to the destination and stateful protocol which means that it will track at every uh, session so we can look at that that's uh, on the screen we can see here we have a tcp header so uh, important things that we can note here in tcp header is a source port and destination port source port is something that the host will pick random uh, port destination port is uh, most likely is going to be a well-known port for example like port 80 if you're visiting a website then we have a sequence number so usually in these sequence numbers is we have uh, able to uh, reconstruct the data the, the uh, segments then we have a acknowledgement number so with this we can acknowledge that okay we received so and so packet send me the next packet and so on header length that's the length of this uh, header tcp header the window how much data we are sending uh, we allow to send from the source to the destination like a uh, window size the checksum urgent and we have some options and on the underneath that there's application layer data UDP is defined in RFC 768 or request for comments 768 and it's uh, connectionless UDP does not establish the connection prior to sending the data between the source and destination. Uh, unreliable delivery. UDP does not provide services to ensure the data will be delivered reliably. There is no process within UDP to have sender retransmit any data that has been lost or corrupted. So, for example, if, if some segment has get lost or uh, corrupted, then uh, UDP is, it won't be able to send it. No order data reconstruction. Okay. Occasionally, data is received in different order that it was sent. UDP does not provide any mechanism for reassembling the data to the original sequence. No flow control. There is no mechanism within UDP to control the amount of data transmitted by the source to avoid overwhelming uh, the destination device. The source sends the data. If the resources on the destination host become overtaxed, or busy to to uh, uh, busy the destination host must uh, most likely drops the data until resources become available so this is the tcp uh, sorry udp header on udp header it's good to note that it's a lot less field than tcp header we can see that we have still have the source port and destination port uh but you just have length of the header and then checksum and then we have the application layer data Separating multiple communications, TCP and UDP to manage these simultaneous conversation within varying requirements. The TCP and UDP based services must keep track of various application communication. To differentiate the segments and datagrams for each application, both TCP and UDP header fields that can uniquely identify these applications. They will put a header so they can identify. The unique identifiers are the port numbers. So, for example, we have a source port number and destination port number. 
TCP and UDP port addressing. In the header of each segment or datagram, there is a source and destination port. The source port number is number for, the com for this communication associated with the originating application on the local host. The destination port number is the number for, the, for this communication associated with the destination application on the remote host. It is a combination of transport layer port numbers and the network layer IP addresses of the host. They uniquely identify a particular application process running on the individual host device. This combination is called a socket. So for example, here we have a source, uh, this PC is communicating with the server. It's communicating with as a FTP communication. So destination port is 21 for FTP and the source port is randomly pick 1305. Then we have a same uh, client is talking to uh, the server with a website, is navigating to some website. So we have a destination port is 80 and the source port is 1099, as I can see that. Now, when you combine both source, destination port number and source and destination IP addresses together, this is known as a socket. The port numbers are defined in the groups of so three different uh, type of groups. We have uh, well-known ports uh, from 0 to 1023. We have registered ports from 1024 to 49,151. Uh, 49,152 uh, to 65,535 are called dynamic or private ports that you could use. Uh, well-known ports, these ports are reserved for services and applications. Like for example, FTP, SMTP, uh, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, TFTP, all these are under well-known port numbers. Anything from 0 to 1023 is known as well port number, well-known port. These uh, registered ports, 1024 to 49,151, these ports are assigned to the user process or application. These processes are primarily individual applications that a user has chosen to install, rather than common application that would receive a well-known port number. And then last, we have a dynamic or private port numbers. These are usually assigned to dynamically uh, to client application when the client initiates a connection to service. The dynamic port is most often used to identify the client application during the communication, where the client uses the well-known port to identify the connection connect to services being requested to the server. TCP and UDP port addressing. Uh, sometimes it is necessary to know which active TCP connections are open and running on a network on the host. Netstat is important network utility that can be used to verify these connections. Netstat will list the protocol in use, the local address and a port number, the foreign address and port number, that's a destination port address and number, uh, port number, and the connection state. Unexplained TCP connection can pro, uh, pose a major security threat because they can indicate that uh, something or someone is connected to the local host. Additionally, unnecessary TCP connection can consume valuable system resources, thus slowing down the host performance. TCP and UDP segmentation. Each TCP segment header contains a sequence number that allows the transport layer functions on the destination to reassemble segments in the order which they were transmitted. To ensure that the destination application has the data in the exact form that the sender intended. There is no sequence numbers in the UDP header. UDP is a simpler design and generate less overhead than TCP. Resulting is a faster transfer of data. So UDP uh, just has source and destination ports while the TCP has a source and destination port, as well as sequencing, uh, sequence numbers, acknowledgement, flow control, so it's a bit more uh, uh, extra fields on the header. Okay, now we will talk in section 7.2, uh, TCP and UDP. This is chapter 7, transport layer. So TCP and service, TCP server process. The key distinction between TCP and UDP is reliability. The reliability of the TCP communication is obtained through the use of connection-oriented sessions. Before host using TCP sends data to another host, TCP will initiate a process to create connection with the, with the destination. So before then data is, is uh, sent or received, the TCP will create a session with the destination, will open the session, 
and then after they agree in all the uh, fields then the data will start uh, flowing after the session has been established and the data transfer and the data transfer begins the destination sends acknowledgement to the source for the segment that it receives these acknowledgements form the basis for reliability within the tcp sessions so you can see that uh, for example uh, this client one and client two is talking to this server so client one is using uh, http communications the destination port will be 80 the source port as you can see down here the source port will be a random number random port number used so same for the client two is using destination port is 25 and the so source port is random number they picked from private port numbers tcp connection establishing and termination we have a three something called a three-way handshake three-way handshake will establish that the destination device is present on the network will verify that destination device has an active service and is accepting request on the destination port that the initiating client intends to use for the session it will inform the destination device that the source client intends to establish a communication session on that port number there's three steps so first step is the client initiating client request the client to serve a communication session with the server so a client sends a message saying okay i would like to chat to you it will create a sim flag it will set to validate the initial sequence uh, number randomized uh, sequence number valid relative value is zero random source port 1061 in this case a well-known destination port 80 HTTP port indicates a web server uh, or http daemon so for example uh, this client machine is trying to talk to this server uh, it's using a port number random port number 1061 and using a port number a well-known port number 80 which uh, defines that is is using a, a http communication it will have a, a synchronization send a synchronization flag set and it will have a sequence number 100 on step two the server acknowledges the client to server communication session and requests a server to client communication so now it says okay well I, I i acknowledge that you want to talk to me and then i have to start my own one as well so because it's a, it's a two-way the tcp server must acknowledge the recipient of the sim segment from the client to establish the session from the client to the server to do so the server sends the segment back to the client with acknowledgement act flag set indicating the acknowledgement number is significant the value of the acknowledgement number field is equal to ism plus one so for example it will send a synchronization message its own synchronization message back to the client because it's a two-way uh, process and it will acknowledge the synchronization number from a uh, client so for example it will start his own sequence so his sequence is 300 and acknowledgement is 101 which means i got your sequence sequence 100 please send me 101 so now the step three the initiating client acknowledgement acknowledges the server to client communication session finally the tcp client responds with a segment containing an ac its response to the tcp sim sent by the server there is no user data in the segment the value in this acknowledgement number field contains one more uh, one more than the ism received from the server after the, both the sessions are established between the client and server the additional segment exchange in this communication will have the act flat set uh, so then the user data will start flowing so the client will send uh, will be established will send a sequence 101 so it will continue sending the 101 his own sequence will acknowledge 301 which says i got your sequence 300 please continue with 301 and it will be acknowledged tcp session ter termination to close a connection the finish or fin control flag must be set in the segment header to end each one way tcp session a two-way handshake is used consisting of fin segment and ACK segment. Therefore, to terminate a single conversation supported by TCP, four exchanges are needed on to the both session. So for example, the client will send a fin, the, receiver, the, the server will receive that fin, and it will send the acknowledgement, and then it will send, send its own fin uh, flag, and then the client will acknowledge that fin flag.
TCP reliability, order delivery. Segment sequence number enable the reliability by indicating how to reassemble the ordered received segments. The receiving TCP process places the datagram from a segment in the receiving buffer. Segments are placed in the proper sequence number order and passed to the application layer when reassembled. Any segments that arrive with non-contiguous sequence number are held for later processing. So for example, this uh, client machine is sending segment 1 to 6 and each segment will travel, will, can take a different path. So they will receive on the, on the destination, they might come not ordered. So we can see 1, 2, 6, 5, 4, 3. So they are a bit different. So now before the TCP gives those segments to the application layer, it will reorder them the way they were sent. So 1 to 6, and then it will hand them over to the application layer. Acknowledgement and window size. The window size is the amount of data that a source can transmit, transmit before the acknowledgement must be received. For example, uh, say uh, here we have a, a we can say a, a window size is 3000. So I can send 3000 bytes before you can send me a acknowledgement. So I send the sequence number one with uh, 1500 bytes, then sequence number 1501 with another 1500 bytes, then I'll wait for your acknowledgement. So your acknowledgement should be uh, 3001. So when the TCP at the source host has not received acknowledgement after a predefined amount of time, it returns to the last acknowledgement number received and retransmit the data from that point. So for example, says this acknowledgement says, okay, continue. I got 3000, continue with 3001. So this will be the next sequence, not the 1500 bytes. And then 4,500, next sequence, not the 15,000 bytes, uh, uh, 1,500 bytes. So acknowledgement number 6001. The window size determines the number of bytes uh, sent before acknowledgement is expected. The acknowledgement number is the num number of the next expected bytes. Now, say that I sent uh, 500 after, then I'll, I should be receiving or expecting acknowledgement, say, continue with 501. Then I'll send another 500. I should expect the, uh, the acknowledgement saying, send me 1001. If I don't send anything, I will return and say, okay, well, last time he acknowledged was five, 501. So I'm going to continue sending another 500. Today, host will employ something, a new feature called uh, selective acknowledgement. If both hosts support SAC, uh, it is possible for the destination to acknowledge bytes in discontinuous discontinuous segments and then host would only need to retransmit the missing data. So for example, again, I send you 500 bytes, I'm expecting acknowledgement 501. I get that, then I'll send another 500 bytes, I'm expecting the acknowledgement uh, 1001. Now if I don't, I'm going to return to 501 and send you another 500. But you, what you can send me, you say, okay, well, I got up to 730. You can continue just from there. They, those are the rest are lost. So this is called a selective acknowledgement. TCP flow control. TCP flow control congestion avoidance. Flow control helps maintain the reliability of TCP transmission by adjusting the rate of the data flow between the source and destination for a given session. Flow control is accomplished by limiting the amount of data segment forward at one time and by requiring acknowledgement of receipt prior to sending more. What we're saying here is like, for example, okay, uh, say I send you 500 bytes again and I should be expecting acknowledgement from yourself. If you don't send me acknowledgement, uh, we can reduce our flow. Say, okay, uh, we can send a bit less, let's reduce the number uh, of bytes that we are sending, which includes reducing the window size. So for example, say, okay, well, 500 things are getting lost. Let's reduce our window size to, I don't know, 300 and try that. Another way to control the data flow is to use a dynamic window size. So this is what I was talking about. It's a dynamic window size. When network resources are constrained, TCP can reduce the window size to require that receiving segment be acknowledged more frequently. UDP is low overhead against reliability. UDP is simple protocols that provides the basic transport layer functions used by applications that can tolerate small loss of data. For example, DNS, simple network management protocol, SNMP. 
DHCP Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, TFTP Triple File Transfer Protocol, IP Telephony or Voice over IP, and online games. For example, uh, imagine uh, if uh, IP telephony, we don't want to retransmit, we don't want to have reliable communication. If some packets get lost, it's better to be lost than to retransmit them again. Application that use TCP and UDP, for example, uh, applications that will use a TCP are some applications that need reliability. For example, HTTP needs that reliability. So if the packets that get lost or corrupted, HTTP will want to resend the packets again. FTP, again, file transfer protocol, SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol, Telnet, they all use TCP or reliable communication. Unreliable communication, or UDP, you have a protocol like, again, let me say DHCP, DNS, SNMP, TFTP, voice of IP, and IPTV. Okay, now I will show you a Wireshark demonstration on observing a TCP a three way handshake. Uh, again, the three way handshake was the client was saying, uh, uh, sending a message to the server saying, I would like to communicate with you. It will put the synchronization uh, flag set, and then the, the, client, the server will acknowledge that. It will say, Okay, I got your message, but I need to start a new session from me to you, from server to client. So that's the second step. And the third step is to acknowledge the client is acknowledging the, the service uh, communication. Okay, so for this case, I'm gonna still use uh, from chapter six, we had our lab here. This router uh, is being set up with IP address. Um, and I'm gonna uh, start a communication from the client machine to the router. So on this, what I did on router one, I enabled a small database with the username and password, username admin and a password Cisco, just so the client machine can log in. And I have, uh, I need to enable IP HTTP server, so this to be enabled. So the client machine can actually communicate through HTTP with our uh, router. So I'm gonna open a client machine. Okay, it's been paused, so let's start this client machine again. Okay, um, so what we want to do is we want to start the Wireshark protocol analyzer. So right click on this port and okay, first let me stop that capture from previous tries and then start the capture again. So this is going to start a Wireshark protocol analyzer. Okay, after this starts, I'm gonna start uh, a session, uh, HTTP session from the client machine to the server. So, click on the Internet Explorer. So I'm gonna go to the host machine, open the Internet Explorer, and in here, I'm gonna type uh, 192, 168, 168.11.1. Okay, I'm gonna log in, admin, and password uh, Cisco. Okay, now I have logged in. Let me go back to here and uh, see, I'm gonna stop this capturing. And I'm gonna filter, I want to see on the TCP information. Okay, so if I go right to the top, so you can see, uh, it's coming from 192.168.11.100. Uh, and it's going up to 192.168.11.1 protocol TCP. And you can see that it's, this is happening three three way handshake first. Uh, the host has used the port number 49182. So remember, those were the dynamic port numbers. And it's communicating with port 80. That's HTTP on the router. Sequence zero, and uh, now the port 80, this is, this is the communication from the router to the client machine, is using the, the source is port 80, and destination is 49182. It's, sorry, it's using the sequence number zero, 
and is acknowledging the the client zero and saying okay send me the one number one we'll continue here uh, it's not authorized because it's using strong privilege level 15 and it's going again port 80 is a client machine uh, sorry from the router to the client machine again sequence number 193 and is acknowledging 408 and then from the client machine is using again the same port is acknowledging 408 and uh, acknowledging 194 so it's saying the sequence number 408 and acknowledging because he's asking for 48 he's sending 48 and acknowledges 193 it says okay send me then 194 so acknowledgement says okay send me the next packet it doesn't say oh i got 193 send me okay 194 means i got 193 and then the communication again from the client to uh, uh the server uh to the r1 okay um again we can go through here we can right click here and just uh, in the um Wireshark, we can just click and follow TCP stream, and this will show you what's happening. Uh, here you can see that it's been unauthorized. The reason it's not authorized is because uh, it needs a privilege level 15. Okay, so in this chapter, we have learned the role of the transport layer is to provide three main services first, multiplexing, different streams uh, that will go through uh, in the one communication. Uh, segmenting and reassembling and then error checking it is the, it does this by dividing the data received from an application into segments adding a header to identify and manage each segment using the header information to reassemble the segments back into the application data passing the assembled data to the correct application how tcp and udp operates and which popular application use each protocol Transport layer functions are necessary to address issues in the quality of service and security in the network. Ports provide the tunnel for data to get from the transport layer to the appropriate application to the destination. Thank you for watching my videos. Uh, please have a look at other videos and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. This has been Astrid Krasnich. Goodbye.